What is up everybody? The Fish Tank Guy here and today I'm talking about essential saltwater aquarium supplies. Okay, so there are a lot of videos online, there's a lot of information online, there are a lot of products online that you can buy for your saltwater tank. But what I've found is after the first year and a half of having a saltwater tank, there are uh, only a few things, well not a few, there's a lot here, right? But there are certain things that you find yourself using over and over again, and there are other things that just end up sitting on the shelf and wasting space, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through all of the items that I use on a regular basis that I feel are essential to keeping a saltwater aquarium. And hopefully it will help to better prepare you guys if you're going to start a saltwater tank of your own or if you've already started one and you want to know what you need to maintain it. Also, this should help you if you're on a budget so you don't buy too much stuff that you don't end up using. All right. Now, a couple things to note. I left out salt and I left out water because I figured those are kind of givens, okay? So the other thing I want to let you guys know is this is a new video camera. This is totally irrelevant to the content of the video. This is a new video camera. It shoots in 1080p and it's 60 frames. So let me know how it looks in the comments. This is a different camera than the one I've been using and hopefully it looks pretty good. So, all right, I'm gonna take you through all the stuff, tell you why you need it and that's all I'm gonna do. All right, here we go. So up first here, we have, yes, believe it or not, this is a towel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a towel. You may think you have towels in your house, but you want a separate, dedicated fish tank towel. Because last time I checked, you don't wanna be taking your towel out of your kitchen and wiping your fish turd water hands on it putting it back in the kitchen and then drying your dishes with it because then you'll have fish turd water on your dishes. So, get a separate towel just for your aquarium, all right? Now, as you'll see, I've got a few buckets here. I've got two five gallon buckets and I have a one gallon bucket. The reason I have two five gallon buckets, the one is used for taking water out of the tank when doing water changes and the other has fresh salt water, like a fresh salt water mix in it at all times, just in case of emergency and for when you do water changes. And I think it's just a good idea to keep the two separate. Uh, you know, you have bacteria buildup in your water, you have nasty things that you're removing when you do water changes, and you probably don't wanna get that mixed up with your fresh, clean, brand new salt water. So that's why I have two five gallon buckets, and I think it's pretty crucial um, for your salt water aquarium setup, so keep that in mind. As you see, I have a third smaller one gallon bucket. This is helpful when you might want to clean sand or you want to do a small water change or you need to put a small amount of water in your tank. So having a one gallon bucket on hand is very helpful as well. Okay, here now we've got the Saltwater Master, master, bleh, master Test Kit. Don't really need to explain that. That just checks all of your levels and your parameters. So I explained it anyway. Here is your refractometer which measures your salinity. Definitely need to have that, okay? Over here, we've got, ignore the bowl. You don't need the bowl. The bowl is holding up this, ignore the bowl, okay? Next, we have Refusion 1 and Refusion 2, which is a two-part dosing system. Uh, I'm assuming that most people here are gonna wanna keep a variety of coral. If you have softies and beginner coral, you probably don't need a two-part dosing system. But if you have medium to more advanced corals, you might want to have it on hand. It comes in handy. I'm saying hand a lot. It comes in uh, whatever. It's helpful. All right. So you're going to want to have a two-part dosing system on hand. Next here is a dechlorinator. I use Prime. You can use whatever you want, but I think having a dechlorinator on hand is helpful just in case something gets introduced to your tank that's nasty or you want to double check to make sure that uh, when you're changing your water you're not putting any unknown ammonias or nitrites or nitrates into your tank. That's kind of always good to have um, as a part of your essential supplies. Okay, moving on. Now here we sort of have the feeding portion. Here is a small filter. This is for the frozen food. I put a cube in here. Rinse it under the tap water. People say the tap water is bad. I don't think it matters. Rinse it under there, and then I put the food into the measuring cup, and I suck it out of the measuring cup with turkey baster. Yeah! Turkey baster is a very critical 
uh, tool, I would say, in keeping a saltwater aquarium. It's good for feeding your tank. It's also good for getting detritus off your rocks, sucking up stuff in the sand, and various other things. So you're definitely going to want to have a turkey baster on hand. If you're wondering what the knife is for, the knife is just to cut the frozen fish cubes of food. Um, because I can't use a full cube at once. It's way too much food for my tank. I should, I should mention, let me take a second here, I should mention that these are the essential supplies for a medium-sized tank. Maybe like a medium to, to large tank, but not like a super big tank. You, the, the, the supplies will change when you have a really big tank, but this is for like a medium type tank. Okay, right back into it. Here we go. This here is a small little turkey baster. That is used for my two-part dosing system, and if you ever need to put any other chemicals in your tank. Okay, this here is coral glue. This is very important because you will want to keep your coral in place on your rock work. And you might think, well, all my corals are in place. Why do I need to have coral glue on hand? You know, hermit crabs and fish and shrimp, they like to hang around on your corals, and inevitably, one of them will knock a coral off and you'll need to glue it back up. So that's why it's good to have coral glue on hand at all times. Okay, next we're moving to the cleaning portion. All right, here, this is just a blue sponge. You just use that for manual cleaning of your glass or any other areas in your tank. This here is a toothbrush. It is not your toothbrush. It is a toothbrush. Look how nasty it looks. Ooh, ooh, yuck. This is a toothbrush. Get a junky toothbrush that the dentist gave you or go down to the dollar store and buy 10 of them and you'll use this randomly to either swirl around sand when you're cleaning it or scrub something off your rock work, something like that. It's a very useful tool that is pretty much overlooked, but I use it a lot. Okay, up next is the mag float. You guys have seen this before, the floating magnet aquarium cleaner. It is patented by the way. And this is very helpful for daily cleaning of algae buildup on your glass. Up next is a thin or narrow, I don't know what you call it. It's a scrubber. It's just like this sponge, but it's on a wand thing. And this comes in very handy when trying to clean hard to reach spaces in your tank. For example, I use it to clean the back wall of my tank. I can't use the magnet cleaner on the back wall and it's hard for me to get my hand behind the rock work so I use that to scrub all the nasty stuff off of the back wall. It's really really helpful in that in that regard. All right, up here is a fish net. Do I really need to describe this? Uh, no, but I will. You can use this to put your put hermit crabs or fish into your tank or remove hermit crabs or other invertebrates or fish from your tank. Hopefully if you are removing it, using it, oh boy, hopefully you are using it to remove fish from your tank when they are misbehaving, not when they are dead, but it happens, all right? So you're gonna want that on hand. Here we've got a siphon. This is for doing your water changes. Obviously, this is an essential. I don't need to talk about it any longer. And last but not least, we have, oh, it's, it's polyfill. The premium polyester fiberfill. Best performing fiberfill for pillows, dolls, stuffed toys, and crafts. And for mechanical aquarium filtration. So you're gonna wanna grab a bag of this from a store. Any store will do. You wanna make sure you do not get the type of, of polyfill, bleh, of polyfill that has the anti-flammable chemical in it because that can do harm within your aquarium. So you just want the original that does not have the anti-flammable stuff and you'll be good to go. It costs a few bucks and it lasts you for a really long time. Okay, so there we go everybody. Sorry I got a little, little long-winded in spots, but again, these are your essential saltwater aquarium supplies. You pretty much don't need anything more than this. Oh, I forgot to mention, you do need food. I only keep frozen food. I don't have flakes or pellets of any or any of that stuff. I just stick with frozen. It works really well. I have a few types so I can rotate them so they get different nutrients and things like that. And the fish love it. So why bother with the other stuff when I can just have one type of food, frozen food, and do it all the time? Well, I have multiple types, but it's all 
frozen. You know what I mean. Anyway, I am the fish tank guy. I hope this was a helpful video for you. I'd like to thank you guys so much for visiting my channel, subscribing, commenting, giving me your opinions and your advice. I really appreciate it. And I hope you continue to visit the channel and give me your feedback and, you know, chat with the community and help each other out. I really love to see that kind of stuff. And um, as you know, I'm the Fish Tank Guy. And until a future Fish Tank Guy video, I will see you guys soon.